everybody, this is Lee with Creative Two Time Mom, and today I'm going to be talking about our third grade reading list. So, welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for watching today. And if you're new to Creative Two Time Mom, this channel is all about homeschooling, parenthood, and thriving in the day to day. Today, we're joining in in a collaboration that is being hosted by Mommy and Mia Homeschool Chronicles and Diary of a Homeschool Mama. I'm going to link both of their channels down below as well as the playlist. I actually have two videos going up in this series. The first one is for my third grader and later on I will be sharing the assigned readers for my sixth grader. I kind of wanted to break them up. There's enough of an age difference there that I wanted to create two separate videos here for this one. But in this video, I'm going to talk about my third grader. Now Josiah is seven years old. He will be eight less than a month into the homeschool year. And since we homeschool, I was able to start him pretty young. And I felt like that was gonna be a little bit of a push. And some days it is. But he loves to read. In fact, I can't hardly get enough books for him. The challenge comes in that his reading level is much, much higher, years beyond um, his capability, not his capabilities, but just his slot because he is younger. So he wants to read like sixth grade reading level books, but the content is not always uh, age appropriate. <laughs> so he is a challenge. So I come up with a pretty hefty stack of books because he can read through very, very quickly. I started out with a list of 10. My thought was for him to have one assigned reader a month and then he could read whatever he wants. Now, of course, if he just wants to blow through that list right away and then go on to whatever he wants for the rest of the year, I don't mind that either. Um, but I think this list may have grown a little bit beyond 10. I have most of them here with me today, although there are a few that we will have to put on hold from the library, and I think maybe one that I need to purchase, but I'm not sure. So the first one is a book by Beverly Cleary. It's called Socks. This was actually on our summer reading list and we just didn't get a chance to get to it. But I purchased it used and I think he's going to really like it. We have a kitty cat and right now he is in love with kitty cats. This is supposed to be a very uh, mischievous little um, socks and he is trying to figure out what to do when the baby arrives. So I, <laughs> I kind of want to read this one myself. So I added it to his reading list. It was a good excuse to purchase a book for him for me to read. The Courage of Sarah Noble. Now you will notice with this reading list, some books are just fun, like socks, and then some are a little bit more history based. And that was because we are doing Story of the World, and this year we are in volume three, which is going to take us up to uh, the 49ers. So I kind of wanted to get just some early American, a few early American things in here. Uh, so we have Sarah Noble, and uh, this is kind of just one of those classics, and very, very short. I know he will blow through this in no time. Looking at this right now, it's less than 60 pages. The print is really, really big. He will read this in no time, but I felt like it was good content that I wanted him to get. I have a couple of these books by Landmark Books. The first one is Meet George Washington, and the second one is Meet Abraham Lincoln, again going along with that early American history. These are pretty accessible. I've used them with my other kids. They're well written. They're not really, um, I would say not watered down. I feel like they're a good introduction for this age. And so that he can kind of get into some biographical reading without being completely overwhelmed. This is another one along the same lines, Squanto, Friend of the Pilgrims. This is great for that early elementary years. Probably second grade would have been better, but because of the time period that we are studying, I want to include this one. Sarah Plain and Tall, again, a classic. We have listened to this on audiobook, but it's been quite a while. And for me, there's a difference between listening, maybe that's just my personal thing, and actually reading the story, so I included that one. Chocolate Fever. I just got this one just for fun. Uh, somebody was getting rid of it, and I thought, oh, Josiah would love that, so I'm going to put that on his list this year. The Bears on Hemlock Mountain. This is uh, one of those thin 
tight little books like um, The Courage of Sarah Noble. But uh, I have never read this one. So it just says, people have always told Jonathan that there are no bears on Hemlock Mountain, no bears at all. So he isn't afraid to set out over the mountain. But as Jonathan discovers one cold winter night, people aren't always right. There are bears on Hemlock Mountain. So I actually kind of think I want to read this one. And again, this is one of those, I think, Maybe first grade, second grade would do well with that. I kind of went crazy on uh, Beverly Cleary books, which is interesting because she's not my favorite author. <laughs> uh, I don't like the Ramona series, but I do like all of her books about Henry Huggins. He's hardworking. He tries to be a friend. He's, um, he's just a sweet boy. And since I'm raising a son, uh, we picked up Henry Huggins. We also picked up... Henry and Ribsy. Ribsy is one of my favorite. We have listened to that one on audiobook and it's read by um, Neil Patrick Harris. One of my absolute favorites to listen to on audiobooks. So we got that one. Uh, I have a couple that I want to include that I don't have here. Maybe just two. The first one is The Matchlock Gun. And again, that's going to kind of go to that early American history time period. And the second one is called The Last Safe House. As I was doing some research, it's been a while since I looked at this book, but as I was doing some research, I got the impression that it had to do with the Underground Railroad, which is not something that we've ever really studied before, talked about before with him. So it looked like a good second to fourth grade content possibly so we're going to pick that one up I've never seen it and I don't know anybody who has an experience with it so if you do leave me a comment I'm curious um there is another one uh because of one Dixie this to me is just a classic third fourth grade fun fun story and I like I said I wanted to throw in some fun adventurous type kid stories and a lot of these to go back with an animal theme and that one's by Kate DiCamillo I don't even know if I'm saying that right <laughs> we also have Flora and Ulysses by the same author I didn't think I was gonna like this book but then we listened to it in an audiobook and it's just silly it's just fun silly good um you have a squirrel who thinks he's a superhero. He somehow, I don't remember if he gets sapped by the vacuum or sucked up by the vacuum. And when he regains consciousness, he thinks he's a superhero. But his superhero power is to write poetry. And he gets into all these mishaps. And so she has to save him. Very, very, just funny, lighthearted. So that's everything that I have included in my third graders reading list this year. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know, have you read any of these books or what you are including in your kids reading list this year? I hope this video inspires you and we'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.